We're going to take a journey of discovery and improvement and help you become a hero with Mux Data. So how do you become a hero? You always have to take a journey, a hero's journey. And so along this discussion, we will go through challenges, meet allies, finally make a rescue. But the first thing that we need to do is the, answer the call to adventure. Step out the door. Like Bilbo Baggins steps out of Bag End and the Shire and leaves for an adventure, you need to do the same. And you've shown your willingness to do that just by attending this event, by using Mux, by deploying data yourself, you have already answered the call to adventure and showed interest. As well, you need a helper who can guide you along that journey. Think Nick Fury for Iron Man. Although the people at work think I'm really funny, so they suggested Fozzie Bear for your Kermit. But somebody to help guide you. And I'm Steve Lyons. I'm a data pro a product manager for Mux Data, and we're going to go on this journey together. So one of the challenges after you start using Mux Data after a while is you start seeing not all of your traffic, traffic ends up in Mux Data. Like Harry Potter's Marauder's Map, you can see the footprints, but you can't find anybody there. You can see the footprints in your system, but they're not showing up in Mux Data. And oftentimes, this is because of ad blockers. So ad blockers will block not just ads, they'll block analytics, they'll block content, really anything that someone wants to, to block of your, of your site. And so we generally see between a 10 and 30% and uh, rate of uh, blockage that generally for something like quality of experience metrics really doesn't cause a problem for you because you get enough data to be able to get what you need. But if you're building engagement metric, if you're looking at engagement metrics, you're building integrations like Dave uh, so did such a great job talking about, you want to have all of that data that you can. So there's a couple things that you can do. So the first thing, many heroes go see an Oracle. If you're Neo, you go to the Oracle. If you're at Mux, you go see Ed. He's our Oracle. So if you're watching a video and Ed is telling you the secrets of, of life, but somehow that data is not getting to Mux, what you can do is you can set up a proxy server. So this is a server you run that, that you set the, the Mux data beacons to, to uh, go to instead of directly to Mux data, and then you forward them on uh, to Mux data from there. Um, the data looks normal. It, comes for, it has correct geo, uh, uh, geolocation. It has the usual metadata. You can't really tell this is even done. Um, and so you can do this as a first party domain, something like data.mycompany.com to, uh, to get by some of those content blockers. The, the bad part of this is that you then have to run a server. It's really simple. All it's doing is, is forwarding requests, but you still have to support it. The other thing you could do is an easier solution is we now have custom domain support for Mux Data. So you can set up a domain, data.mycompany.com, directly on the endpoints to Mux Data so you can send those beacons to. So your content is much less likely to get blocked, uh, your Mux Data content much less likely to get blocked so that your views end up in Mux Data. So if you're trying to make sure you have all of your data, so if there's a support issue or you're doing engagement integrations, so that you have as much of that as possible. All right, so now we have all of our data and let's talk a real advanced use case. So especially for our customers who are using their own video backends. So let's say you have some data on the server and you want to get that into Mux Data, but you don't have a good way to get that to the client. And on Mux Data, we collect all of our data from the viewer on the client. So you need to figure out a way to get it from the server to us. Like Leia with the droids, she couldn't send them directly to the Rebel Alliance. She had to send them to Obi-Wan first, who then got them to the Rebel Alliance. And that kicked off hundreds of heroes' journeys and even more sequels. So what's a specific example of what I'm, what's a specific example of what I'm talking about? See, funny. Um, so let's say you want to test your ABR algorithm. You want to create a new rendition set. You have a better, uh, you know, a, a higher level that you want to test or different levels. Uh, so you create this new rendition set and you now want to test it for your users and see what the, the quality of experience is for the different pools of users that you want to test. So you create that on the server, you send those, those uh, renditions down to the view, but the, the player itself often doesn't know that it's looking at a different rendition set than perhaps someone uh, in the next room who's watching the same content. So, so the problem you have is you often need to build a side channel then down to the client to be able to send that information so that you can set it in Mux Data. 
Instead, what you can do is you can use a, a feature of HLS called session data. This is essentially a key value pair that you can put into a master playlist that we can then extract automatically. And there's a number of metadata fields that you can set uh, through this. So it could be experiment, it could be a session ID, video data. There's, there's tons of different options that you could use for setting this data. But what it allows you to do is, you know, in your master playlist, put something like this uh, bolded part. So you say io.lytics.data.experiment name, I give it a value, I'm running my test is true. And then that data is automatically extracted by the client and sent to Mux Data. So you can, you can now easily automate that process. And then you can look inside of Mux Data and see what the quality of experience is for your old ABR algorithm and your new ABR algorithm. So you can very, very accurately see how is this impacting my users. So as you make changes, um, you can make sure that you're making the right changes. And it's important to note that this is a feature that we built for Mux Video so that we can test our services. But we want to make sure that the services we use to improve Mux Video are also available to our data customers. We, we want to support building the high quality services that they're trying to build as well. All right, so we have a couple challenges out of the way, and now everybody has allies. Like Lucius Fox and Batman, you need to have your, your business side and, and your superhero. And just like that, you need to have your partnership with the business. So you want to be able to add some of that business data to Mux, to Mux data that you can report on. And maybe you're not quite ready to build a whole data warehouse solution that you can then you know, match this data up together. Although Nitty and Philip did a great job talking about that, not everybody's quite ready to do that yet. So what you can do is you can import that data into Mux as part of the view so that you can then bring value to your, your business partners and, and see the engagement of the data. So what am I talking about? So let's say, for example, you have a free plan and you have a paid plan. You can build, out of the box, Mux data doesn't support a plan type metadata, so you can't track that. But we support custom dimensions. So you could set up a custom dimension you called plan type, uh, add it to the view category, and so these look like regular dimensions. If your business partner comes in and, and looks at Mux data, it'll look just normal. They'll be able to use it just like any analytics tool. But what that then allows you to do is when you set that data on the client, it gets set up to Mux data, and then you can provide value back to your, to your business partner. So you can see, are my free users engaging in different content than my paid users? Are my paid users engaging in more content? How can I improve my service so we see more engagement for you know, one plan or another. Maybe you have more resources for your paid customers than you do for your free customers. So is that showing up in the quality of experience as I would expect it would? So there's a lot of ways that you can provide this data back to the business so that they can improve the service, you know, not just from a technical perspective, but from a business perspective. All right, so we have our allies. We're like the Goonies on One-Eyed Willie's ship. We're ready to get the treasure and to make our exit. But it's never that easy, right? You, you have a, an event you're running and Twitter is blowing up, something's going on, right? And it just starts building, a crescendo. Something is happening and things just aren't quite working. So rather than tempt the, the demo gods, I'm gonna walk through here on the slides how you can walk through Mux data to figure out the impact and figure out where the problem is. So the first thing that I would do inside of Mux data in my metrics is I'm gonna look down the left-hand rail and I'm gonna see that my overall viewer experience of 82, not so good. I, I would really want it to be higher than that. And below that is my component scores, my playback success, startup time, smoothness, and video quality. And I can see really pretty, pretty quickly that the smoothness is where I wanna focus on. So I'm gonna click on that and dive into what's there. And what you would see by default is the breakdown tab would be selected and there's 40 different dimensions that you then have to look across. Am I, you know, could this be because of the browser, because of the operating system that the viewers are using, the player I'm running, the plugin that, that's running, the CDN, the geography, there's endless numbers of dimensions that you might want to look across. Or you can take the shortcut, you can click the insights tab which does that for you automatically. It looks across all of these different dimensions to see you know, what is it that's driving that, that negative experience for your users. So in this case, 
I can see clearly it's it's Android and Chrome Mobile. So I can start to I can click into there and then do the same exercise again. I can see is it my player on mobile? Is it just something about Android? Is it the type of video I'm watching that do, isn't compatible with um, with the Android operating system? So it really allows me to to dig in very quickly to figure out what the problem is. So as I'm doing that, I want to often back up a little bit. I want to look at Android as well as the other major platforms that I have and sort of understand, you know, is the performance good or bad? It can be some high, sometimes hard to contextualize the performance that you're looking at without comparing it to something else. And so I want to see, is, is the perform, how does the, the performance of Android compare? You know, we already know that the smoothness score is really bad compared to the others. So I, I sort of expected that, right? Um, so then I want to look at my rebuffering percentage. You know, it's five times iOS, so clearly also really bad. Something I, I want to think about it and look at. So two down. So then I want to look at my rebuffer count. Bad, but not that much worse than Windows. And so I can keep doing this. I could go all day. We have 30 more of them that I could go through if you want to. But I suspect you probably don't. So you can take the short way out as well. We want to provide you a shortcut here. So what you can do is click the little circles to the left the platforms and they become these little jellies next to there. And when you do that, then this compare metrics button comes up and, uh, and is able for you to be, to be clicked. And when you do that, that's our hidden little muck secret that brings up all of the metrics that you can then look at. And what that allows you to do is to start to construct a story about what's happening to uh, across these different platforms and figure out where things are good and maybe not so good just based on, on all of the metrics at once. So I could see, for example, that playback success score is also very bad for Android. So I need to look at this. So clearly there's something happening. But startup time score isn't so bad. So I can start to see that this doesn't look like it's, it's a delivery problem. It's probably a player problem. You, know, you can start to answer these questions as you get more clarity on how across all of the different metrics that Mux Data provides you, you know, um, what's good and what's bad. So you can start to, to, uh, to tie it down and to solve that problem. So once you do that, you can fix your problem and you can rescue your application and you can be the hero for your, uh, for your application. But what I wanna leave you with is this, is this last thought. All of these features, some more complicated, some more simple, some more automated, are all built for developers. They're all built for product managers, all built for technical founders who are building applications with video. And we provide not just quality of experience, but also engagement about how people are watching your videos, what kind of content that they're watching so that you can build on your application. Because we really believe that the best video experiences are provided by the most insightful data. And that's what we wanna help you with because that's how we think we'll democratize video.